Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Gold Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today we are taking a look at Brock Besser and the Vancouver Canucks. It sounds like there is going to be a split here in the very near future between the organization and the player as apparently... Uh, according to Elliot Freeman, he said the Vancouver Canucks have given Brock Besser permission to speak with other teams to try and facilitate a trade. And again, that is from Elliot Friedman. So the Brock Besser era in Vancouver seems to be coming to an end. The 25-year-old forward of the Vancouver Canucks is a former first-round pick. Back in 2015, he was in the conversation for winning the Calder Trophy along Matt Barzell in the 2015-2016 NHL season. Actually, no, mind that, 2016-17 NHL season. He was in the race for the Calder Trophy as Rookie of the Year. Now, obviously, he ended up losing that to Barzell. He got injured in his uh, two years after the NHL draft, getting selected. 23rd overall by the Vancouver Canucks and what's interesting about this Minnesota native as he's kind of had just a weird career in Vancouver uh, the points are definitely there but one of the problems with Brock is his availability you know he's one of those guys that has been injured a lot through his NHL career and you look at his last couple of seasons you know he's been in the NHL yeah the 2016-17 season was his first season so three four five six so this is his seventh season in the national hockey league and a fun fact here well not really fun fact i guess but you know an interesting fact is he's never played a full 82 game schedule uh, his first season he played the last couple games of the season for the canucks in that 16 17 season in the 17 18 season Again, he was a runner-up for Calder Trophy behind Barzell, putting up 55 points in 62 games. And that is pretty much as good as it's gotten for for, Bo, you know, for Brock Besser at this point in his career. And, you know, you look at the longest season he had, which was last year, he played 71 games for the Canucks, uh, which was pretty close to a full season, right? They played 72 games last year. I think, no, maybe they did play 82. Yeah, so he missed games last year as well. Uh, but this is a guy that can score goals. Uh, he's continually scored 20-plus goals in his career. He had a, goal, a season with 29 goals, 26 goals, 23 goals. And last season, he also had 23 goals. So this is a guy that can produce. And that's with limited time, right? That's with sub-82 game schedules, he's still putting up 20-plus goals a season. And if you give him the full 30, you know, the full 80-game schedule, he's a guy that could put up th between 30 to 35 goals a year. And that's a really good hockey player. Now, what's the downside? Well, the downside, there's always a downside. The downside here with Brock Besser is his contract situation. It's a little bit complicated because... Especially in Vancouver, you know, the Canucks are one of those teams that's kind of in a weird contract salary cap crunch situation. And they kind of did it to themselves with the Jim Benning era of this organization. You know, you look at some of those signings that have got the Oliver Ekman Larsons, the Tyler Myers, you know, they can't move those contracts. So if they want to make, you know, salary cap space, they're going to have to move somebody that is at least somewhat attractive. And one of those guys is Brock Besser. Last year, he signed a three-year deal making $6.65 uh, $6 million per season. He is the second highest paid forward on the Vancouver Canucks roster right now. And again, when you've got some big contracts coming up here this summer, it's easy to see why the Canucks would look to move some cap space. And especially for a guy that really they could find other guys to fill his role and be more consistently in the lineup. Uh, Bo Horvat's contract comes to an end this coming summer. Andre Kuzmenko, same story. Niels Hoglander will be in RFA. Ethan Bear will be in RFA. And then, again, to a lesser extent, Luke Shen, Kyle Burroughs, and Christian Wolanin will all be UFAs next summer. But really, the big thing here is Kuzmenko and Hoglander and Horvat. And I think that they would put a priority over th those three guys compared to Besser at this point. Now, with that said, well, what teams would be interested in a guy like Besser? Well, there's it's kind of complicated because it depends on 
what the Canucks get in return. Now, I think the Canucks ideally in return would get a first and a second round pick. And I think that's asking for a lot at this point. But it's not that far-fetched. Again, it depends on what the teams around the league value Besser as. You know, because like I said, this is a guy that if he plays a full 82-game schedule, can give you 35-plus goals on a good season. But then the argument is, well, he's been in the NHL for seven years, and even with the pandemic and stuff like that, he has never played a full 82-game schedule. So, yeah, he has the potential to be a 35, you know, you know, 35 goal scorer each season. He's just not in the lineup enough. So that's kind of the concern that the Canucks are going to have in terms of finding a lot of trade partners because teams might not be willing to give up a first and a second round pick for a guy that hasn't played a full 82 game schedule. So that's something that I think is a little bit of a hindrance here. Not to mention, again, a lot of the teams that would probably be interested in Besser also have their own salary cap issues. So they do they really want to add 20 plus million dollars paying out over the next three years to a guy that has not played a full season yet? That's where the concern is with a guy like Besser. But again, if a team is really desperate for goal scoring, maybe they're willing to make that move because they think that the upside of just having a goal scorer in the lineup is just so important to that team that they are willing to sacrifice maybe not having them for a full 82-game schedule. And maybe that's kind of the mindset. You know, teams might look at this like, listen, we'll give you a first-round pick for him and a sub-level prospect because we want the talent there as depth and not necessarily a guy that's going to be a you know we expect him to consistently be in the lineup in the top six all year round and that's where maybe a team could slide in there and bring him in who has a little bit of extra draft capital or maybe some extra money on the side to do that and again that's the thing a lot of teams don't necessarily have that now, if you look around the league at some teams that should be interested in Besser and have been linked to Besser in the not-too-distant past, um, I think there's a couple of suitors out there. I look at the Philadelphia Flyers as a team. Again, it depends on if Chuck Fletcher is even there next summer to even consider making a move, but the Flyers need goal scoring, and that's really a weakness for this team. Another interesting thing about the Flyers is they have some decent prospects. Um, I don't think Cam York is going to necessarily be available. I think the Flyers really like what he provides. But it makes you kind of wonder, well, again, is there any way they can maybe move, say, a Morgan Frost or Noah or Jackson Cates? And I know they kind of like those guys right now, but you wonder if one of those types of players becomes available. And I think there is something to be said for that. I think those guys will be interesting players for the Canucks, you know, and you look on the blue line, there's a couple of younger guys in the lineup, Yegor Zamola, um, goalie Felix Sandstrom, uh, Wade Allison is still fairly young at 25 years old, Bobby Brink, um, you know, they kind of buried Bello, so we're not really looking at that, Tyson Forster, Isaac Ratcliffe. Now, here's the problem. A lot of these guys have not lived up to the potential that the Flyers were hoping for. And that's part of the reason they would probably be available is they, you know, Isaac Ratcliffe was a former first round pick. He never really became anything. Tyson Forster, kind of the same thing. Evan Barrett was a Chicago Blackhawks first round pick they acquired earlier this year. These are guys that just have not really developed. So do the Canucks really want to trade a guy that scores 20 plus goals every year, even though he's injured, for a guy like a Morgan Frost. I just don't really think they are going to do that. So that's one team to consider. Again, depends on what the Flyers do this year and their direction moving forward, but that's a team to look at. Uh, the San Jose Sharks are kind of interesting. Again, they have a lot of dead salary cap money, which makes things a little bit tricky if they are looking to bring that contract. But that's a team to consider. Again, I think the Sharks and the Canucks try to avoid trades, but we've seen them do it before, so it's not necessarily that far-fetched. I look at the Bruins and the Penguins also as players here, depending on where the Penguins sit at you know, a little bit later. I think that's the problem with the Penguins is they don't really know what they are yet. Are they a bona fide playoff team or are they not? I think that's part of the concern there. I think the Bruins are a real player there. You know, there's been rumors that they really like the idea of Patrick Kane. I've seen some Bruins, uh, you know, media trying to stir that pot a little bit with Patrick Kane going there. You know, what about a guy like Brock Besser? Again, you've got a lot of talent there. So if he's not in the lineup, it's like, all right, well, if 
Besser's not in the lineup, then Hall can jump in. So there's a little bit of flexibility there. Um, you know, I look at I always look at the Islanders as a team to add another forward. I just don't think it's going to happen, especially with the money side of things for the Islanders, but something to consider. And of course, the Minnesota Wild. You know, I've heard Minnesota Wild fans mention that in the past. You guys always are bringing up, why don't we bring Bo- you know Brock Besser back home, back to Minnesota? And I think that is something that is absolutely on the table. Again, it, it's going to be difficult in terms of what goes the other way. You know, the Wild are kind of a team that's looking to dump off a defenseman. Do they want, say, a Brodeen or a Dumba or a Spurgeon? Again, they need help defensively, so maybe it becomes a trade where it's a one-for-one, which can be scary, but I think the Canucks could be willing to make that work. And again, money-wise, it might be a little bit more, um, you know, it might make a little bit more sense in that regard as well. So again, if you find a way for Dumba, you know, again, those other contracts, Brodine and Spurgeon, are kind of ugly. I don't think the Canucks want more of that, but those are things, again, just to consider. So let me know what you guys think down below. What do you guys think of Brock Besser? Where do you guys think he will end up getting traded? I like the Minnesota Wild. I got to be honest. I think the Wild are a team that is a real favorite here if they are to land a guy like Brock Besser because I think their their positioning here for the next couple years is pretty clear. They see themselves as a team that can win a Stanley Cup. They have a little bit of draft capital. It's going to close up this year, but... Maybe they could get something done here, kind of find a way to move some of that money, whether it's a Brodeen or a Spurgeon, find a way to get out from some of those bad contracts. And I look at teams, again, if this kind of drags out into the summer, I wonder if the Penguins, the Flyers, the Islanders, I think there's going to be plenty of suitors there. And again, it's not like the Canucks have to rush a deal for, for Besser. I think it's more of they'd like to find get an idea of who's at least interested and what the market exactly is for Besser before deciding what the future is there for the Minnesota Natives. So guys, let me know what you think down below. Where do you think he'll get traded? As always, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you again next time.